In this video, we will talk about energy and motion of satellites. We will analyze motion of satellites using Newton's second law, the concept of centripetal force that we have seen before, and Newton's law of gravitation that we have also covered. We will also look at the kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy of these satellites as it moves around a planet. We will then solve a few problems to illustrate these concepts. Let's assume we have a satellite that is moving around this planet with mass capital M. The satellite's mass is little m. It is moving in a circular orbit with radius r with a uniform speed. As we have explained before, this satellite will experience an attractive gravitational force towards the center of that planet. And this force, let's call it F sub g, is given by Newton's law of gravitation as the universal gravitational constant times the product of the two masses over the square of the distance between these two bodies. Since this satellite is moving in a uniform circular motion, it will also have an acceleration towards the center of the orbit, and that acceleration is the centripetal acceleration. The centripetal acceleration A sub c is given by the mass of the satellite, the constant speed squared over the radius of the satellite, or the distance between the satellite and the planet. The free body diagram of this satellite shows the only force that's acting on the satellite is this gravitational force. So the net force on the satellite is simply equals to the gravitational force Fg. From Newton's second law of motion, net force equals the mass of the satellite times the acceleration, which in this case is a centripetal acceleration. Thus, in this case, the gravitational force provides the centripetal force, which is m times the centripetal acceleration. So since gravitational force is given by g, the product of masses over the radius of the orbit squared, and that equals to m times the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. So we see that the little mass will cancel, and one of the r's will cancel, and we can write an expression for the speed in terms of the radius of the orbit in that manner. What this equation shows is that we cannot choose the orbit radius r and the speed v independently. If we choose a value of r, then the speed is determined. Another important conclusion that we can get from this equation is that the mass of the satellite is not showing up in this equation. This capital M is the mass of the planet. So the satellite's motion does not depend on its mass. So if you want to place a satellite of mass M, M can be anything, at a distance r from the center of the planet, then that satellite must have this speed given by this equation. So let's do a simple exercise. If you want to place a weather satellite into orbit 300 kilometers above the Earth's surface, what should be the speed of that satellite? The radius of Earth is given as 6,380 kilometers and the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 kilograms. Using that equation that we have just written down, square root, universal gravitational constant, the mass of the Earth over the radius of the orbit, we get the following for the speed. So the speed is square root g is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 kg over the radius of the orbit is the radius of the Earth, 6,380 kilometers, plus 
the distance from the surface to where the satellite is, that's 300 kilometers, convert it into meters, so you multiply it by a thousand, and you're gonna get 7,727 meter per second. So that is the speed of the satellite that is needed to place it in the orbit that far above the Earth's surface. Now let's obtain a relation between the orbit radius and the orbit period, capital T. Now T is the time taken by the satellite to complete one revolution around that planet. Since the circumference of that orbit is 2 pi little r, we can write the orbital speed v as 2 pi r over the period t. By equating these two right-hand sides, we obtain the following. This is the equation that relates the orbit radius and orbit period. Slightly rearranging these two terms, we will get orbital period equals 2 pi over square root gm times r to the power 3 over 2. Now we note that this capital M is the mass of that central planet around which the satellite is orbiting. So let's use this period radius relation that we have just derived to do the simple exercise. A satellite's period capital T is desired and this satellite is moving in a circular orbit at a distance of 160 kilometers above the surface. So what is the satellite's period? Using this equation we can immediately compute that so little r is 160 kilometers converted into meter plus the radius of the Earth, which is 6.37 times 10 to the power 6 meter. Do not forget the power 3 over 2 over the square root of 6.67, that is the gravitational constant, and 10 to the power minus 11, times the mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 kg, which will give you 5,250 seconds for the orbit period. Let's look at the energy such a satellite has a satellite that is moving around this planet in a circular orbit with speed v meter per second. We have seen in a previous video that the gravitational potential energy is given by this expression. Keep in mind of the negative sign and also linear r in the denominator. Next, let's look at the kinetic energy. So what is the kinetic energy for such a satellite? The kinetic energy can be derived, well, we know the kinetic energy is simply given by half times mass times the square of the speed. We want to derive kinetic energy in terms of the mass of the satellite, the mass of the central planet, gravitational constant, and also the radius of the orbit. Note from the force analysis, we found that the gravitational force on this satellite provides the centripetal force, which is mv squared over r. We see that the r can get cancelled, and if you want to rewrite this in a following manner, then the left-hand side of this equation must also have a factor of 2 in the denominator, like that. So by comparing these two equations, we immediately see that the kinetic energy of the satellite that is orbiting a planet at a distance r from the center of the planet is given by this equation. Therefore, the total mechanical energy of the satellite, which is simply the sum of the gravitational potential energy and the kinetic energy, will become minus g 
the product of the two masses over 2r. Note the minus here. That's what you get by adding u and k. Let's do a problem. A 25 kg satellite with a circular orbit around a planet has a period of 4 hours. It is situated at a radius of 7 times 10 to the power 6 meters. Find the radius of the planet. If the gravitational acceleration on the surface of the planet is 9 meter per second squared. The force equation will give us the following. mv squared over r equals g little m capital M over r squared. We also know that v equals 2 pi r over t. Now this is a circular orbit. The first equation, you can see that the mass of the satellite cancels, so the mass of the satellite does not matter. If we take the square of the second equation and put it in the first equation, we will obtain the following. Let's also cancel one of the r's. Now squaring the v, we have 4 pi squared r squared over t squared, so that is v squared right there, equals the right-hand side of this equation will become g, mass of the planet, over the radius of the orbit. Rearranging it, we can determine the mass of the planet, and that will be 4 pi squared r cubed over g t squared. We know what r is. r is 7 times 10 to the power 6 meters. We know what t is. t is given in hours, so you have to change that into seconds. So 4 hours times 3600 seconds. So substituting all this information in here and using the value for the universal gravitational constant, we will get the mass to be 9.79 times 10 to the power 23 kg. What we are interested in is the radius of the planet. Now we saw in our previous video that the gravitational acceleration is given by the universal gravitational constant times the mass of the planet over the square of the radius of the planet. Since we know what the mass is, we can compute the radius. The radius of the planet is quite simply capital G, mass of the planet, over the gravitational acceleration square root. We know what g is, we know the mass of the planet, we have just computed that, and gravitational acceleration is 9. Putting everything together, we will obtain following for the radius of the planet, 2.7 times 10 to the power 6 meters, and that solves the problem. Problem 2. An astronaut releases a ball with a mass of 8 kg, so this is an 8 kg ball, into a circular orbit around Earth at an altitude of 400 kilometers. So altitude 400 kilometers is that. So that is 400 kilometers. Calculate the kinetic energy, gravitational potential energy, and total energy of the ball while it is in the orbit. Total mechanical energy that is. Kinetic energy is given by the following expression. Gravitational constant product of the masses over two times the distance from here to where the ball is. Putting in the information, we will obtain the following. G is 6.67 times 10 to the power minus 11. The mass of the ball is 8. The mass of the Earth is 5.98 times 10 to the power 24 kg over 2 times. R is the radius of the, the Earth, which is 6.37 times 10 to the power 6 meters plus the 400 kilometers converted into meter is 400,000 meters, 236 million joules. That is the kinetic energy of the ball while it is in orbit. The potential energy is given by the following. So its numerical value is twice that of the kinetic energy with a minus sign, and that will give you minus 472 times 10 to the power 6 joules. The total mechanical energy is quite simply the sum of kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy, and that will be minus 236 times 10 to the power 6 joules, which is what you get by adding this number and that number.
and that solves the problem. Thank you for watching.